Jess, I just got home and I can't find any food. Didn't you make anything? You're already home? I guess you did say you'd be home early today. Do you remember I was telling you about the new head of department who transferred in? Dave? Well, he's amazing. We've been able to finish the project so fast because of him. Oh, Dave? Didn't we have him over for dinner one time? We met his wife too, right? Yeah, that's the one. I used to have to do so much overtime before he was transferred in. Sometimes the old boss would go home early while the rest of us were still slaving away. Really? That sounds terrible. It sounds like you have to be thankful for Dave then. Yeah, exactly. You've really taken to him, haven't you? He always comes up in conversation at home. <laughs> It's because he's just such a great boss. Anyway, what about dinner? I'm absolutely starving. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just finishing work. And I have to go pick up Hannah now, too. You'll have to wait a little bit longer for dinner. I'm sorry. What? You really didn't make anything? You knew that I was coming home early, though. I mean, yeah, I knew, but you only told me this morning. Either way, you were aware that I was coming home early. You could have made something before you went to work. You leave the house a lot later than I do. I don't think it's out of line to expect that of you. Wow, stop right there. You know that I have to do housework and drop Hannah off in the mornings. And that's not to mention preparing for my own job. I don't have any time to do anything after that. I mean, I guess. But you are my wife, right? I'm only asking you to do the bare minimum that a wife should do. It's unfair if I'm working to put food on the table and you aren't even prepared to do some housework. Hey! I also work hard! Anyway, how old are you? If you're starving, you can just make yourself some food. Or you could go and pick Hannah up for me and I'll have more time to cook. I can't do everything. You know I can't cook, though. And it's weird for a dad to go pick up his daughter from nursery. Don't you think? I don't want to do that. Uh, no? Who told you that? No one would care. I also just don't want to bump into all the other parents. Why are we even discussing this? It's your job. Well, if that's really how you feel, then you'll have to wait a bit longer for dinner. Even if I start making it straight after I pick Hannah up, it'll be ready at about 8 p.m. Is that okay? So you're telling me that I should just power through until then? This is all your fault. Something doesn't add up here. What are you on about? If you don't want to help out, then you'll just have to wait. End of story. Yeah, I understand that. But you should have to do this work. It's literally your job as the wife. I'm not messing around. Dealing with the housework and childcare is the role of a mother and wife. You need to get that into your head. What in the world has gotten into you lately? You've been really self-absorbed recently, haven't you? We have a child now, so act like a father. It's funny that your daughter can deal with waiting to eat more than you can. Wow. That was a bit uncalled for. I don't care. You have to stop being a child. I'll cook dinner for you still. You'll just have to wait a bit longer. I'm off to get Hannah now. When I get back, I'll cook something for us. Finally, I just finished work. Today was a long one. You prepared something for tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. I prepared everything for you. Great. Listen up, I've been thinking and I have something to tell you. I wasn't in the wrong at all the other day. What are you talking about? I'm talking about yesterday. I've been thinking about it and I was definitely in the right. Yesterday? When you were talking about my role as a wife? Or that there was no food ready? Both. They're both linked. You do realize that what you were saying yesterday was wrong, right? You really think like that? I didn't say anything that was incorrect, though. Well, some of the things you were saying yesterday just didn't sit right with me. I asked Dave about it at work. He's got a wife and kid, remember? So I thought he was a good person to ask about it. Yeah, I remember. And? What did he say? He said that children and housework are a woman's job, so it would be weird if I did it. Wow, Dave really said that? Yeah, that's what he said. 
When you think back to the most primitive humans, it was always men who hunted and women who protected the young. That's the way it was for men and women a long time ago. It's better if we both stick to what we're good at. But we aren't primitive humans, are we? And don't you think that I could be the hunter if I'm working? Have you considered that? Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. You say that you work and you could be the hunter, but I'm the one who works the long hours, aren't I? So you can barely say that you're the hunter. Dave also said this to me too. I know I'm not wrong about this. It's so obvious. Maybe that's how things work in Dave's family. But everyone's home situation is different. I'm not sure you can always apply his logic to our situation. It doesn't matter how much you respect him. Just lapping up everything he says isn't good. What's different between his situation and ours, though? We're both a family of three. We have exactly the same situation. <laughs> but his kid is a high school senior. And his wife is a stay-at-home mother. Clearly, it's different to our situation, no? Hannah is still in kindergarten, and I'm working. So, our situations are vastly different. I don't think it's that much of a difference. They've still experienced having a young child. Even if he is a high schooler now. Right? They've been together the whole time, when he was young and now when he's a bit older. I suppose, yeah, they might know what it's like to have a small child. But what about work? Like I said earlier, Dave's wife is a full-time housewife. She hasn't worked since they got married. That's definitely different to our situation. <laughs> I think you're getting a bit desperate with your arguments now. Don't try to find an excuse to hide your laziness. It's not an excuse, it's the truth. I don't want to say anything bad about your boss's wife or anything. But I do think that trying to compare our situations with theirs is pointless. Okay, that's enough. No more excuses. If she's able to do it, you are too. From now on, you could just try a bit harder and you'd be fine. And stop asking me for help all the time. What? Did you not hear what I just said? I'm not a full-time housewife like Dave's wife. And I'm doing all the housework and childcare while also working, aren't I? You never help out. Never. I literally couldn't do any more. Don't be so one-sided. It's a bad habit of yours, isn't it? You always choose to complain before just getting on with things. If you think that's what I do, then you should look a bit closer at home. You could always do some cooking or cleaning instead of complaining to me that it's impossible. Don't you think that if you're willing to complain to people about it, then you ought to do it yourself? But why should I even have to do it in the first place? Cooking and cleaning are a woman's job, aren't they? Don't try and pass the buck on this one. Wow, so that's how you really think. I've heard enough. I won't say anything more on the matter. Finally, she sees sense. <laughs> we could have ended this without a big discussion. If you'd only been reasonable from the start. That's what you think. You'll probably change your mind in a bit anyway. You're always easily influenced by those around you. When you understand that you're in the wrong, I'd appreciate an apology. What? I'm not going to change my mind. I'm in the right here. I respect Dave's opinion a lot. I'm not going to change what I think. If that's the case, then we have another problem to contend with here. Are you really thinking in depth about what happened? I'm not taking responsibility for what happened. You understand that, right? I think you're overreacting a bit here, talking about responsibility and whatnot. <laughs> None of this is on me. You must understand that. That's the truth. Okay, okay. Whatever you say. Sean, you've already finished work, haven't you? Why haven't you come home yet? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I've gone out drinking with Dave. So, I won't need dinner. Really? You're still out? Recently, you've been doing this a lot. And what? Is that a problem? It's nothing to do with you if I want to go out and have drinks, is it? You're wrong. It does have something to do with me. I cooked you a meal and I'm waiting for you to come home. That makes it something to do with me, don't you think? If you don't need dinner, then you should tell me that before I make it. I'll just make enough for me in that case. And I can eat when I want to eat. What? Why are you being like this? Isn't it natural that you make me a meal whether I tell you I'm coming home or not? That's your role as my wife. Stop complaining about it. 
Why on earth would I have to make food for someone who isn't going to eat it? What would the point of that be? Are you expecting me to cook even if you don't eat it? That's just a waste. But you don't know that I wouldn't be in to eat it. Sometimes I get him from work and feel starving straight away. If I'm randomly hungry like that, it's a genuine issue if there's nothing to eat. I honestly don't think you should talk back to me on stuff like this. You're my wife and it's your job. End of story. It would be good if you could listen to what I'm telling you just this once. <laughs> I've been trying to bite my tongue, but... You've been a real POS to me recently. Have you realized that? Excuse me? What have I done to you? I'm talking about your general attitude towards me. You'd never have had so many digs at me before. Is it because you've been hanging out with Dave more? If you've been getting influenced by him, I think it would be better if you spent time apart from him. You're not a pleasant person to be around now. Why do you feel like you have the right to comment on my friendships? Who I choose to be friends with doesn't have anything to do with you. If you've got enough time to complain like this, then you have enough time to do a bit more work around the house. Right. That's typical of you these days, isn't it? I've heard you loud and clear. If you really understand, then you won't say anything out of line after this. The only reason you can live like you do is because of me. You shouldn't forget that. Right. I see. I really am thankful you're in my life, okay? I'm just glad if you finally come around. Anything else? Is that all? If you don't have anything, then I'm gonna get back to it. I'm sorry, but there's one more thing. I'm keeping Dave waiting. Make it brief. Can I leave Hannah with you tomorrow? Her fever is still pretty high at the moment. Can you watch her for me? Tomorrow? We're both off tomorrow. Why do I have to look after her? It's finally my day off. I told you this morning, didn't I? I'm going with my mom to the hospital. She's probably going to have to stay overnight, so we need to bring some stuff. So I asked you to look after Hannah. You told me that you would. Oh, did I really say that? Can't you move the appointment? Can't Hannah go with you? We definitely can't move the appointment. You can't just move the kind of appointment she has. There's a process with these things. On top of that, Hannah still has a fever, remember? I don't know how long the whole process will take, so I can't take Hannah along. But tomorrow, I promised Dave I'd go drinking with him. What time will you be home? I should be back by the evening, even if I am a little late. Look, I'm not going to tell you not to go drinking, but you won't go drinking from midday, right? Can't you look after her until I get home? Even if you tell me to listen to you, I won't come around. You know that? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'll tell Dave that I can't meet him. It's the right thing to do. Really? You're going to do it? You'll have to prepare her lunch, too. There's a few bottles of sports drinks in the fridge. If she's thirsty, please give those to her. I know, I know. More importantly, make sure you're back by the evening. And when you get back, make sure you do all the housework, all right? You don't have to ask me, I know. Anyway, I have to get up super early in the morning. Thanks for looking after Hannah for me. No problem. I've got this. Oi! You told me you'd be home by the evening. Where are you? Why aren't you home yet? Where are you? Are you trying to get out of doing the housework? Where are you? You must be joking. That's what I should be saying to you! What? I don't know what you're on about. Start speaking sense. I'm going to ask you very clearly, so please answer me properly. Where are you hiding? You're trying to get out of your duties. Where are you? No, no, no. Where are you? You weren't home. Hannah was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Did you know? What are you on about? One of the neighbors found Hannah on the ground outside. They called an ambulance for her. Wait, wait. Why was she outside by herself? That's exactly what I'm asking you. Why did you let her outside by herself? I asked you to watch her. Why was Hannah outside alone? She has a fever. What were you doing? It was you. It can't have been me. I have no idea what happened. Anyway, that's not important right now. Is she okay? They said she's just got a bit of heat stroke. She's fine now. 
I want you to answer me properly, though. Why was she out there alone? Where were you and what were you doing when you should have been watching her? You know what your problem is? You're silent when something doesn't suit you. But you're always full of life when you're throwing your weight around. When you're really needed, you're useless. Anyway, it's fine now. We can talk about it more when I get home. Can you pick us up? The faster we get picked up, the faster Hannah can get some rest. I'm sorry, but... I've had a drink or two, so I can't drive. What? You've been drinking? You're telling me that you left your daughter by herself, when she had a fever, no less, to go drinking? Are you joking? She was fine when I left the house. And you said you'd be home by the evening. So I thought it would be fine to just go for a little bit. What time did you leave the house? Hmm, probably at about 2 p.m. And what time is it now? It's already 7 p.m. Did you realize that? It's been almost five hours. That's more than just a little bit, don't you think? Wait, wait. Hannah is already in kindergarten. Don't you think she's old enough to be left alone just for a little bit? And besides, I was drinking close to home anyway. It seems pretty normal to me. I don't get why you have a problem with this. I just can't believe this. Tell me this is some kind of bad joke. If you're being serious, then I don't know what I'll have to do. But I can't just let this slide. I told you that I'm not joking. Anyway, why was Hannah outside by herself in the first place? I told her that I was leaving. She promised me that she wouldn't go outside. I can't believe that she went outside anyway. You need to work on her listening skills. I have no words. Are you really trying to push the blame onto your own daughter? This is all on you. I just didn't think Hannah would be so disobedient. I didn't think we'd raise that kind of kid. You didn't think we'd raised what kind of kid? She's still in kindergarten. How can you expect a six-year-old to keep a promise like that? She must have been so lonely. She had a fever and was all alone. And what do you mean by all this? Are you trying to say that me leaving the house is directly linked to her going outside? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. She wanted to go outside to find you, didn't she? She knew that if she called me, then it would have put me in a tough spot. She just wanted to find you, wherever you were. But she didn't even know where I'd gone. And how did you plan to find me? How long have you been a father? You should know the answer to those questions by now. Kids her age don't think things through before doing them, do they? She just thought that if she went to any bar, then she'd find you. So she decided to go to the nearest bar, the one on the corner. It's the only place she knows where people go to drink. You still can't put this entirely on me. Is it normal for her to do such rash things? She didn't know that I was going to be at that bar. What was she going to do if I wasn't there? Stop trying to pass the buck. She's not at fault here. You really haven't acted like a father to Hannah. It's not just about you literally being there. You have to act like a father too, you know? It's very rich of you to get all high and mighty and tell me what I should do as your wife when you can't even do the simplest things as a father. You should have Hannah's interests at heart at all times. It really doesn't seem like you even tried to do anything for her. I don't get how you were able to do something that so clearly put Hannah at risk. I didn't mean to. I've been saying that since the start. It doesn't matter if you didn't mean to. This whole situation is because of your rash actions. Hannah had to be taken away in an ambulance. And instead of worrying, you just say that it's not your fault. How can you say that you're still in the right in all this? Obviously, I think that I have some of the responsibility in this situation. I've been thinking about it a lot. But you can't say that it's all on me, surely. The very fact you still won't admit that it's your fault tells me that you haven't fully thought about it. It's fine, though. That's enough. I want a divorce. Wait. Why are you talking about a divorce all of a sudden? We're jumping the gun a bit here, aren't we? Not at all. I can't be with someone who's willing to put their own daughter in danger and then make excuses about it. So I want a divorce. You aren't an idiot. I know you understand. Stop messing around. I admitted that in this situation I was in the wrong. But I think you can't forget that the reason Hannah didn't do what she was told was because you haven't raised her properly. Not going outside by yourself is such a basic thing you should teach a kid. Don't you think? Don't blame me for this when you've clearly done a shoddy job of raising her. 
And here it comes. I really thought that you'd understand at some point. That's why I put off the divorce for some time. I understand what happened. Isn't a divorce still a bit rash? You can't just decide to divorce me out of nowhere. It's because of you that Hannah was put in danger. And the more I think about it, the more I think that she was put in danger at least in part due to my carelessness. I should have divorced you straight away. That's what I've been thinking recently. So this time, I won't let myself fall back into the trap of believing that you'll change. I'm telling you, I want a divorce. It seems so sudden to demand a divorce after something so small. You could learn a thing or two from Dave's wife. What do you mean? I'm saying that if you were more like her, you might lose this brutish streak of yours. Don't you think that a couple should be able to get over their issues and grow? So when you say you want a divorce like this, I can't help but think, how on earth are we supposed to grow as a couple? And what is your point? What do you want from me? Well, I'm saying that I was in the wrong for taking my eye off Hannah. But her bad behavior is down to your parenting. So can't we just chalk this up to experience and move on? I don't want to entertain the idea of divorce. We should just be more like Dave and his wife. A married couple should work together and respect each other, right? I'm sorry to interrupt you while you're being all high and mighty, but... Dave and his wife are getting divorced, aren't they? What? No, they're not. It seems his wife has already had enough of him. She waited until their kid graduated from high school. She couldn't keep going out with a man who does her nothing but harm. Her and the kid left. Is that true? I haven't heard anything about that. She told me that she'd filed for the divorce a while ago. It's 100% true. So... Should I still learn from Dave and his wife? You're saying that if I divorce you, then that's all right? No, wait a second. I knew nothing about that. You shouldn't use that as proof that we should get divorced too. I think that her situation makes a lot of sense. I think divorce would be the best thing. For a man who's willing to leave his daughter alone to go and drink. You're wrong. I'm not a bad guy. It's not like I wished for this to happen to Hannah. You get that, don't you? It was just an unlucky accident. Yeah, you're right. It was just an unlucky accident. Right? So let's stop thinking about divorce and think about how we're going to move on. We can work together to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. We can put measures in place to ensure it doesn't. As a couple. Together? Don't worry about it. I'm taking measures to make sure it doesn't happen again by leaving you. When we divorce, this problem will be solved. Right? It's the best precaution, don't you think? Wait. Wait a second. If you leave, what am I going to do about food and housework? You know that I can't live without you. That may be the case, but it'll be no issue for Hannah and I if you aren't around. I'll be in charge from now on. I'm not just a doll for you to lord your power over when you get home and are feeling small. If you want to keep being an arrogant POS from now on, then you and your amazing boss can hang out in one of your empty houses and boss each other around. After that, Sean and I divorced. Of course, Sean was blamed for what happened, so I received alimony and custody of Hannah. Just like Dave's situation, Sean lost everything when we divorced. I used the money that I got from the divorce to get a new place for Hannah and I to move into. Dave's wife and I became good friends, and she often came round when she moved into our area. As for Sean, well, his parents couldn't take the fact that he'd been so irresponsible and put Hannah at risk, so they disowned him. I heard that rumors spread about it at his job, too, and he decided to quit when it all got too much for him. Must be living a pretty crappy, poor life right now. I think it's wonderful to have everyone look up to you. It's a fact that there are some people who are respected and live a wonderful, full life. However, having such admiration for someone is just an action we do to try and make ourselves better. In theory, that's great. But if we choose the wrong person to admire, then we get worse, not better. That's what happened to Sean. He chose the wrong man to admire and dragged us all into his mess and brought that unlucky incident on us all. I don't know who Hannah will grow up to admire. But when she does choose someone to look up to, 